I'm Nat, and this is Simon. Um, you are wrong. We're not experienced maths teachers. We're legends of the game maths teachers from St Bernard's College. I used to actually work with Victor, so it was a pleasure having the stage with you. He actually mentioned before, he goes, are you and Simon married? And we laughed. I said, no, he's the head of the department, but I'm the neck. Has anyone seen that quote? I can turn it any which way I like. <laughs> All right, bam, boom. So St Bernard's College is an all Catholic boys school in Essendon, how many Ks? Maybe 15 Ks from here, northwest of Melbourne. We have roughly 1550 boys, Craig, did I get that right? Roughly, yep. And basically today we're just gonna talk about our journey and how maths has changed over time um, and how Schoolbox has basically supported that, um, our new program. What did maths look like at St Bernard's? So Simon and I are actually fairly new to the school. We both started in 2017. Um, as maths teachers, so we walked into the room. I don't know if there's any maths teachers in the room. You'll stand there, do your three examples, you do the questions, then you have homework, do the next questions the next day, test, exam, repeat, repeat, repeat. It was very uh, teacher-driven. After a while, I started to turn out like uh, Mr. Kimball here from uh, kinder no, is it Kindergarten Cop? What's this movie called? <laughs> so we'll have a bit of a play. There is no bathroom, and that was me towards the end of 2017, quite frustrated. I know, Simon, were you a little bit like that? Yep. Like, we can't keep doing this year after year. Is anyone familiar with this story? Yeah, thanks. Come on. Okay. Simon's quite tech savvy, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, got it. So just to match our teaching, our, um, well, we call it my SBC, was pretty much a dumping ground for resources. Maybe some young and put together a course builder. Yeah, that's great. You work through every exercise and then there's a test. Fantastic. Do you think any staff members imported them into their class pages? Of course not. And Simon, I'm going to throw you under the bus here. Simon used to call this shit box, but look at him now. He is loving it. I will show you why a little bit later. So we've turned him around. I'm so sorry, Roberto, for that comment. But now, look at him. Who would have thought two years later Simon would be representing at a school box conference? And now he's going to tell you a little bit out about our maths journey. All right, thanks for that, Nat. <laughs> Look, it wasn't the actual program. It was obviously just the way that we were uh, using it. But I wasn't that familiar with the program in 2017, so it was a little bit on the nose. Anyway, um, yeah, so... In 2017, we sort of, as a maths department, we did start to look at some different tasks that weren't in the textbook. So we looked at some renowned educators in maths and we looked at their tasks and we just started trialling those things just to see how they uh, went. Then we, the whole school was under a little bit of change and so we, there was a research centre there that had just begun in 2017 and I started to work closely with those guys um, to look at how we might make some changes. Um, and then towards the end of the year, we got Professor Diane Seaman in, who's a maths professor at RMIT. She sort of gave us a bit of an idea about the way we could do things. And at the start of 2018, we got their, some of their best students to come in and start to model some different ways to go about it. And so after that, we started to um, introduce rich tasks which the idea was really that they, um, I can't think of what I was about to say, but they developed a conceptual understanding. And so this is just a picture of some of the boys uh, where they have to move um, these cups. It's not beer pong. <laughs> just so you know. move, move the cups around based, based on what fractions are in there to order them. 
And we also try to differentiate it, which this might not make any sense right now, but we have three levels of tasks and we've called them stretch, build and consolidate. And so each topic has three levels of tasks. So I'll just go into that into a little bit, de bit of detail, I suppose. So at the start of a unit, we give the boys a diagnostic, which is a, probably a half an hour task or, or activity. And the boys need to sort of think about how they're feeling during that activity. So for instance, if, they've, if they're asking a lot of questions, they can't make any sort of ground, that's probably too hard, that diagnostic for them. If they have asked a few questions and they've struggled through it, but they actually got there in the end, that's probably just about right. And if they've just smashed it and they're going, what's next? That's probably too easy. And so they would choose the stretch task. And so even after that, they might work on a stretch task or a consolidate task and they go, you know what? This is actually too hard or too easy. They have the options to move up or down as well. And the consolidate, those actual tasks still have different levels within them as well. So the consolidate in just one year below. It sort of has multiple entry and exit points. Um, within that, we have, there's all different modes that those guys can access it. So there's a video of the task, there's written instructions of the task, there's modelled responses that we've put together. They, they aim to link to the real world and they aim to, as I said, with the conceptual understanding, they need to have pictures of their explanation, they have the abstract and they have the concrete materials. Over to you, Nat. All right. Old school here. So how is this driven, um, student driven? So Simon mentioned we had the diagnostic and they might have chosen the build task. It is very easy for them to opt in and opt out. Um, they would have just jumped into the build tile and realised, you know what, this is way too hard for me. We usually give them a couple of days or a couple of lessons to move in and out. It's a bit late towards the end of the task and they might move to stretch, build or consolidate. The kids can actually work together. We, we don't isolate them. We do have an open plan. Um, the planning process behind this, we wanted the students to have the same user experience. So regardless of what topic they did, the layout was exactly the same. So we had to build some um, templates in the back end so when we did create it was a little bit easier. We did definitely wanted a pictorial, why are we learning this? And some of the boys, remember the year seven when we first started, they struggled with how do they set out their workbooks so every topic also has an instruction, look this is how it should look like. And then we also um, trialled continuous reporting uh, with our summative assessment. Yep. All right. So once the student has chosen the task and they're comfortable with that, um, look, we still really encourage um, or emphasise uh, directed teaching. So the teacher will still stand there for a little bit and run over the task. We mainly see this also as a backup um, and it's also for staff because when I have to go and actually mark the work, in my tute group, I have 21 students and they're all doing all three different tasks. So how am I supposed to know all of them? I might be only teaching stretch. So I have to still be familiar with build and consolidate. So these videos are also for um, staff and they're actually made by staff. Um, every page also has modelled responses both for the actual rich task and what their reflection looks like as well as other examples. In the end, the student really needs to know What's my end game? Because I think at the start we didn't really have too many model responses, so the work um, that was presented wasn't to what we thought it would be. So when we went off and actually did the model responses ourselves, we realised, hang on, they're going to have troubles here. We need to change instructions there. So before um, any time we have a topic, we have to make sure that all this work has been completed. So you could imagine the workload last year for us to have everything um, up and running before every single topic. All right, uh, so the other thing that obviously we haven't really mentioned yet to make this work proper, properly was that we had team teaching, which meant that we had four teachers in three classes and on, there was a couple of occasions where there's two classes with three teachers. But obviously having the three or four teachers means that I can be an expert on the stretch task and I can, I can be that person that the kids can come to. We have the open and flexible space, we have the smart TVs around the room. And yeah, as I said, the aim is that it is student-centred so they can 
You don't need to all be together in the stretch group. You could be sitting there working next to your mate who's doing consolidate. You can watch the videos and just get it done. Can I just say something? With the team teaching, I, Simon might be in stretch and I'm in build, but Simon will hover along. His stretch boys are doing plenty of work. They're fine, but I might need some extra support. So Simon will come in and give me a hand or vice versa. So we're not dictated to what tasks we have. We all help each other. We're a team, like a little family. Correct. All right. Um, now, this is just a quote from one of my staff that obviously 2018, sorry, 2017 and before, everyone's just in their rooms, 25, 28 boys, sorry, in rows doing their work and then we just go, guess what? You're team teaching and you're doing rich tasks. And so we had a couple of major stress outs, I suppose. And this is, I, I like this quote from one of my teachers that said, People have been planning and teaching individually for an attorney and just expect them to all of a sudden work collaboratively. And it reminded me of a scene, well, a full movie actually. And I'll just hit play. And you should, hopefully you're familiar with it. Hey. Hey. I'm Brad. I'm Dale. But you have to call me Dragon. You have to call me Nighthawk. I can catch a fly with my bare hand. I like to sleep with the AC set at 68. Four months ago, I had a mustache. Hope you got a bathtub, because I only take baths. I have seven throwing stars. Sunday nights, I watch Big Brother, and that's the law. I program the TiVo. I once valet parked Brett Michaels' car. I once met Dick Buckus. So I guess if you don't know that movie, you've probably been under a rock, but it's Step Brothers, where these two 40-year-olds that have been living with their parents all of a sudden have to share a room together. It's the same, it's pretty much the same thing as putting two teachers that have been in there, set in their ways for 25 years and then going, nah, you're working together. So, yeah, we really, I needed Nat to come up with some strategies with the IT that actually help people work together better. So... All right, so basically staff just really wanted a central hub for curriculum and administration. We wanted to have everything put into one central place and I'm just going to thank Denny from Panola. She came up with that idea, so you're a legend. You want to stand up and give you a round of applause? No, just joking. This is why we have to network and collaborate together. I wouldn't have come up with this idea without it. So what, that's basically what we delivered. When we spoke to staff, they just wanted to be able to access everything for every department, and then we did this across the board for every KLA. Oh, you got the, t you got the clicker. All right, so this is what happens when you um, access our staff room. It's on the dashboard. Um, everyone has access to every single subject that you teach. Um, students and parents also actually have access to this, but only to the course page section. They don't have access to the staff room. That's where all the goodies are kept for their students. All right, so we've delved into the math staff room. So Simon would, um, well, I usually do it for him because he's quite slow. Um, I will pop on there all the stuff that he might speak about out of Matt's KLA, any um, unit outlines, assessment writers and things like that. I also realised that, um, yes, we flip learning, um, we're doing flip learning for our students, but we need to start doing that with our staff. Um, it was only at that stage, there was only a few of us that could help um, staff at that point. And, you know, there's only one of me and there's 120 staff. So I decided to put something together called 90 Seconds of My SBC. Why 90 Seconds? Well, I was thinking about who's the laziest teacher at the school. How much time would they give to school box to learn? So I started from 10 minutes, went all the way down to two minutes and realised mm, I even hear them complaining, I don't even have two minutes of time. So I managed to drop it down in 90 seconds. So it's quite short, sharp, targeted... PL for things that is personalised for our school. I know Schoolbox do have videos and they're great and we also give access to staff to them, but it, this is specific to our school and depending on the KLA, KLA area is what you know I post on their pages. Um, next slide. So when you go in further, it does look like a little bit of a dumping ground at the moment. We do archive all our documentation. So this is only for this year and we split it up. So it's the same user experience. You might be across multiple KLAs, left-hand side semester one, right-hand side semester two. Um, if we don't think it's useful, we'll um, archive it in the following year. I think actually that's still from last year. I haven't archived that yet. 
But look, the point is, when we're talking about team teaching, a lot of the staff, while well, I would get offended if someone would go and change my stuff and then, and then post it, but now we've just let go of all that. If you think you can do it better, do you know what? Why shouldn't you do it? It's not about me. It's about the students. So um, we all have ownership of this, and I think most of the staff now are on board and feel comfortable with people changing or adding to um, documentation and assessment. Um, I'm just quickly run over Maths Pathways, so we've implemented that at the end of last year, and uh, we realised that students also need to have the same teaching experience, especially with this program, so we put together um, lesson plans for staff, so regardless of what class you're in, um, every, every teacher can follow um, the weekly lesson plans, and we've also, we can also roll this out every year. We've rolled this into year eights as well, so we're just um, reusing it, and we've found this a very helpful tool. All right, challenges. So when we first started back in 2017, I think YSBC, Craig, if I'm right, two years into it, uh, we had no e-learning coordinator. Um, most of the Year 7 um, team teachers were, had very limited skills. Our parents were hyper-connected and super-engaged. They would let you know that the due date was on Friday and we gave them an extension on Monday. You would get bombarded with emails, so we were, had to be very careful with um, what dates we put on. At the same time, obviously, we'll report um, piloting continuous reporting, and really, for the first time, most of us have never worked in a um, flexible learning space, and at that time, we were having a building hasn't been, wasn't completed, so we, are, we had limited um, rooms to use. All right, how cool is my little emoji? My twin girls put this together for me, because the one that I did, they go, that doesn't look like you. Sorry, Simon, you didn't get one. All right, how can we do things better? Look, basically, my motto is, my SBC is not mine, it's not Simon's, you know, it's not Craig's, it's not IT, it's ours. Um, we need to take ownership, all the staff. We don't lock anything down. Um, and how can we help staff be better while well, by empowering them? And we're looking into techie brickies at the moment and really getting out there and networking with other staff. I'm finding it really useful. You know, I'm so grateful that I've got, even though I left the school a few years ago, Panola, she's still supporting me and I don't even work there anymore. So thanks, Danny. And then, you know, I've, yesterday I got a, a chance to have a chat with other people and got a few good ideas, but I think really as a community we need to keep doing that because I wouldn't have come up with these ideas unless I heard other people speak or give me suggestions. Simon is the um, monkey in that. And questions? Yep. I was going to ask about when you've got the three groups there. Yep. Come back to the common assessment at the end or therefore how you believe Okay, so that's a really good question. We had um, a few issues at the start. We didn't know how, can we put this on the um, course builder? So what we do is everyone has the same assessment. It's called, for example, we just finished indices rich task. We comment in there, we say, you know, Fabian completed the stretch task, or, you know, James completed the consolidate task, and then we'll put the comment underneath it. And we're still out of a percentage yet. Just following on from that, um, with the rubrics, how, how does that differentiate? Okay, um, we haven't started using the online rubric. We only really brought that in end of last year, the rubric. Was that middle of last year? So we started using the rubric with our rich tasks, and this year we've moved that to, um, we're focusing heavily on how students reflect on their work, and in the last Oh, we just finished marking them. We use the paper rubric. And we're so lucky we actually have an English teacher in our department who um, put the rubric together for us. So we're actually looking at um, using Schoolbox for our next um, rubric. Yeah, go. Sorry, just to add to that, I suppose, with both those things, like the kids do different tasks and there's different rubrics and we mark them separately. So, I mean, they're on the same topic, but they're still actually three different tasks yep yep I guess just a logistical question do you find the kids are choosing an appropriate level to go into or they kind of choose a particular teacher or maybe overestimating what they can do yeah, or choosing there you go. Or? yeah so um, that is a good question and I, I think at the start of year seven it did take them a little while to work it out and 
now generally, as a general rule, that they're, they're picking them their correct tasks. And to be honest, like the kids that are, we're in consolidate in fractions, they're in consolidate for the next one. There's not every now and then like some kids will go from build to stretch, from build to stretch, and maybe build to but there's not that much movement anymore. They sort of know where they're at, I suppose. But yeah, initially there was, and I do think there's still some I have noticed some boys maybe are choosing a teacher, but the way we actually select the task is we the kids do the diagnostic and then we have like three jars where you go S, B, C and they, they go and put a, a little token in the jar to choose. So we don't say, well, um, co come over here, stretch boys. They put a token in the jar and then we, we look at it. So we've got that extra teacher. So we go, ooh, there's a lot in consolidate. That's going to need two teachers. So we'll, put, we'll just go consolidate, go to this room and then they find out who the teacher is later. Yeah, we don't tell them because I think that's what they will do. But don't forget, Simon, at the start of last year, we actually spent a lot of time speaking to the kids about what learning looks like for you and what's the right choice. So we didn't just go, here you go. They will probably yeah. spend a few periods on, um, yeah, how to choose the right task and model it. I have a question, Natalie. So yep. you have a, a great job around differentiated learning in, in the math faculty. So what has been the buy-in in the other faculties I understood there have been some challenges. So how are you helping other faculties to cross-share uh, everything that you have done so that it gets consistent across the whole okay. school? Okay. It's actually also in English as well. So it's across the two um, departments. So I think we are looking at how we can, how can we implement Stretch, Build, Consolidate um, with differentiating across all KLAs. And I'm pretty sure we're in the process of doing that. But yeah, this is the second year running now for both maths and English.